Okay, in this exponent video, we're gonna learn a little bit more here, really quickly. What if you are dividing exponent so that you have x to the fifth over x to the three? What does that equal? Well, when we multiply, we add. So when we divide over here, we're simply subtracting. So we take the five x's on top. And you can actually see this in action, so to speak here. Five x's on top, three x's here on the bottom. What happens? Well, we can always cancel out. How many does that leave us? Two. What's great is obviously you don't want to write all these x's out when you're taking the test. You simply look here at this number, five minus three, that gives us two. So this equals x squared. Now, what happens if I have x cubed over x to the fifth? Well, same rules apply. Three minus five is negative two. So this gives me x to the negative two power. Now I can write this in another way. And it works like this. Whenever I have a negative number as an exponent, I can always take this whole entity and I can flip it, the reciprocal. So I get 1 over x squared. And so if you think about it, going back to x cubed over x fifth, remember when we write the three x's on the top, we have five x's on the bottom. Look what happens. Three cancel out, three cancel out, leaving me a 1. Remember when anything cancels out, it always leaves a 1. So we have 1 on top, and on the bottom we have these two x's, and look, it's 1 over x squared. So that's how that works with the, when you divide exponents. Now, what happens if you have a fraction here? x to the 1 fourth. That can be very scary. So x to the 1 fourth is the same as x, square root of x, and putting whatever number is here next to the x on the outside here. So we're basically taking the square root of the square root of x. Now, this can be all scary and whatnot, seeing the x's and y's, and it's always nice to see this with an actual number. So let's take 16 to the 1 fourth. How would we write this out? Again, make the square root sign, put 16 underneath this. This right here would be 16 to the 1 half. Now, if I have a 4 down below here, that means the 4 is going to go here on the outside of the square root sign to the left, meaning we're going to make this number that's underneath the square root sign even smaller, because we're going to be square rooting it again. So this here, 16 to the fourth, is the same as taking the square root of 16 twice. So let's take the square root of 16 once. That gives us, moving down here now, that gives us the number 4. So 6 root square root of 16 is 4. And then we want to make sure we pay attention to that square root sign. That's still there. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. And so they're not going to test you on the GRE, though. They're not going to say, what is 16 and 1 fourth? That's not necessarily how a GRE problem works. But you need to have a solid grasp of these fundamentals, how the exponents work together when, when for instance, when there's a fraction here, to be able to actually answer a GRE-like question. So I'm going to show you a GRE-like question now. And let's take this rules of exponents. Let's say 27 to the 1 third times over here, 8 to the 2 third is equal to x. And let's make this x squared. What does x equal? So now it's more GRE-ish because you actually have to solve these, th solve for this side first, and then actually solve for what they're asking for, which is x. So first things first, what does the three mean? Well, you take 27, put the cubed here, and that equals three. That is three times three times three is 27. You should know that, practice it in your head a little bit, but that's one of the, one of those sums that you definitely want to tuck away. So square root, cube root, because there's a three there of 27 is three. And then times 8, cube root of 8 here is, and let's actually draw this out. There's the cube root of 8. Oops. We're going to cube it. But then, and here's the twist. We haven't learned this yet. Notice there's a 2 up there. Then we're going to square it. The cube root of 8, or which number times itself 3 times gives us 8, is 2. So that is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So we know that cube root of 8 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. So we have 4 on this side. And don't forget the 3 from the cube root of 27, so we have 3 times 4 is equal to x squared. 3 times 4 is 12. x squared would therefore equal 12. And we want to solve for x. And to solve for x now, we want to take the square root of both sides. The reason here is we want to think in terms of x. We know if I take the square root of x squared, I'm going to get x. So that's great. That's what I want. But I want to make sure to square 12 as well. And so that gets me x is equal to the square root of 12. And there would be my answer using the knowledge gleaned from this video.